Hey everybody, we are live. I'm so excited. We have an awesome week with one of my really good new friends, Brittany, that I cannot wait to um, introduce her and have her share her story with you. So if you guys are new here, I am Bonnie Donahue and we come together every week here Thursdays at one o'clock Eastern time for our little Healthy Mom Chat series that I started. So this is week four, and every week our goal and intention is to bring value to moms in creating their best life, right? So they can live and feel their best so they can give their best to their families, to um, everybody around them in their job or just their friends or spouse. And so that is what we're about. And we've covered back to school health. We've covered my, um, head tension. And we've covered um, last week was postpartum. And this week we have a really great topic and something that I'm passionate about as, just as much as Brittany is. And we are going to be talking about fitness and being a mom and healthy routines um, and, and gearing this toward busy young moms right? Because Brittany's a busy young mom. I am. And we both know what it's like to be in a routine and out of a routine and what that looks like for everybody around us, including ourselves. And so Brittany is on our team. She is awesome. But I was able to just get to know her better at the convention. We got back from in September. And I told Brittany in the beginning, I'm like, one of my goals is to be, become really good friends with you by the end of this week. And um, and we did. And so we woke up and we worked out together. We hung out and we were late talking every night. And and I'm like, you know what, Brittany, people need to hear your story and you need to share this with others. And so I'm just really excited to bring her on and that we were able to snag her away from her busy day. And I know she has really good, valuable um you know, content and stories to share with you. So, Brittany, I'm going to let you kind of take it over and share your story and your heart, and um, and then I'll just be asking some questions, and we'll also open it up for the people that are on. So, thank you so much for getting on, Brittany. Thank you, Bonnie. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so, my name is Brittany, and I am a mom of one little girl. She's four, and I have three angel babies in heaven. Um, since then. So um, it's been a rough last four years for me. Um, lots of back and forth. Like I, I didn't really have a whole good routine. Before I had kids, I did. I had a great routine. It was, I, I don't want to say easy because um, fitness is never like, you know, easy until you get into that routine. But it was a lot easier without kids. So just like finding that ability to just go out and do it was a really big struggle for me. Um, yeah. For the longest time, my husband was going to school when we had um, Clara, she was a baby. So he was going to school and then he was working and I was at home um, for nine months. I was at home with my daughter. So I didn't really have a whole lot of time at all without her. It was always with her. So I did a lot of research and did, um, a lot of home workouts with her. So I would do squats and I would hold her and do squats. So like the added resistance was really good. But that only lasted so long because I was so tired all the time. I was breastfeeding too. So it was really hard to actually get on a routine back then. Yeah. A lot of us can relate. I could too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We tried so many different things too. Um, we went from like getting a home gym system, like a used one, like with a pulley and everything. And then we had a treadmill. And um, even after that, like I still couldn't get away um, and do that because it was in a colder room, couldn't bring the baby in the cold room. And um, so I, then I started like looking up, I did videos on YouTube a lot. I did, um, have you ever heard of Connect by Xbox? Mm -hmm. Well, they we have, have like, Xbox, but it's like full of Fortnite, Minecraft, oh. what that. <laughs> so they have a connect thing where it, it's like basically a sensor and it can sense where your body is moving and stuff. So I would make it fun and get like dance, a dance movie or whatever I can do. And then actually we ended up getting Zumba and like a Nike fitness one. So that's what I did for a while. 
But again, I didn't really set up times to do it. So I, I lost track of that. Um, so I ended up um, getting really depressed and actually not losing the pounds that I wanted to lose. I've always been really fit and um, skinny, I guess you would say. <laughs> um, I always felt good in my own body. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I really felt really yucky at that point. So then I, I got a job and then I was working full time. So working full time, I was able to relieve my husband a little bit. He didn't have to work as much. But then when I get home and he's home too, I didn't have any energy because I wasn't used to it. Right, right. <laughs> and I was breast pumping and stuff at work. So that drains you. It's really hard. So it's all about finding what works for you, I found. Um, I like to go to the gym. If I'm at home, I don't, I don't feel like motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. So some, some people don't like to go to the gym. They, they feel motivated at home. They can put a, a DVD in and, and work out to that. So it's all about finding what you like and what, what works for you. But the, the biggest thing that I've found is like, do, do that the same time every day. I found for me, myself, like I, what I do is I drop my daughter off at school I go right to the gym. So I'm already dressed in the morning. I'm already ready to go. I got this from you. I drink a full glass of water. Yeah, you can an amazing jar too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> full glass of water right, right first thing in the morning. Um, I like to put peppermint and wild orange in there, just a, a drop or two of each. And it definitely helps wake me up a little bit and it just gives me a little boost of energy helps give me a little boost of energy so that's helped I love that can you okay so I have a question for you so let's not skip over this because it's really important and we're, and we're getting comments and, and people are relating so basically you were a new mom I mean that happens to so many of us and we feel like we're sort of like drowning we're, we're losing ourselves our body's looking different our hormones are raging right and and you're like, I could just, I could just go to the bathroom by myself. That would be awesome, right? You know. Um, mm -hmm. But then, how? What made you go from that point to that's it? I'm, I'm doing this for myself, and I'm going to get into routine. Because where you are right now, totally routine. Waking up, going to the gym, like that is that's commitment. So, what got you from there to where you are right now? Um, basically, self love. I didn't, I wasn't doing a whole lot of that. I, um, I was basically putting everybody in front of me. And then in the same sense, I was also getting on Facebook, scrolling for hours, you know, or watching Netflix and binging a bunch of videos and stuff. So I, I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel good physically. Like, um, I just, I, I felt sick all the time. Like right. I didn't really do much for me. So I found uh, plugging into like podcasts or uh, listening to audiobooks um, while I work out definitely helps. Mm -hmm. um, even before that, I would pick up a good book, like good inspirational book that would um, boost that for me. And it would, I would always have like a notepad next to me. Or if I was working out at the gym, I would switch over to my notes real quick and type it in um, if something like a really good nugget came up. Like I was listening to, um, of course, Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. And a big thing that popped up to me is she never lies to herself. She never like breaks this promise to herself, which I thought was amazing. Like I could relate to her friend that said, I always break my promise. I always, I'm always the first one that I break my promise to so I can fulfill other, but everybody else's, you know, ideas and, um, things that they want me to do. So that was very awesome to hear that. And um, I forgot what, what she had said. Let me, I wrote it down. So she had said, never break promises to yourself because um, if you do, then your self-conscious is going to start getting that in or, and you're, you're going to start like knowing that that's like just your habit is just giving you up on yourself basically. And you're never going to get, done what you actually want to get done. So just take that plunge. That first time is going to be the hardest time, of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
do it, do what you want to do the next day, do it again. Like, (laughs) don't stop. (laughs) I love that. How long have you been in a good routine? Um, this past time, so I would go in spurts, Mm -hmm. um, honestly, uh, I would get a good workout routine going on and then, um, I had a miscarriage or I had a good routine going on and something else happened like physically or emotionally or mentally, um, everything like that. Um, so this last one, um, I've been put through the ringer. We've moved to my mother-in-law's house. We lived there for a couple of months. Um, we just recently moved into our new house, um, a week and a half ago, two weeks. Um, so it's been like, I had every reason to quit. Right. I started back in June is when I moved into my mother-in-law's house. We got a um, uh, gym membership. Sorry. (laughs) We got a gym membership. And since then, like I've, I I can't give up on myself. I can't, I can't stop. I do about four days a week at the least. And then um, most, most weeks I like to do five or six days. Okay. And how does that make you feel about keeping promises to yourself, your confidence, you as a mom and a wife? I know I asked a lot. How does that make you feel about pretty much everything? Like you taking care of yourself and keeping that promise to yourself. How does that roll over in other areas of your life? Okay. So when I wasn't doing those things, I relied a lot on my husband. My husband worked full time. I did too when we were up in um, the other area that we were living in. I was working full time. He was working full time. He would come home and do all the work. Like he would clean. He would do the dishes. It would put a strain on a relationship. I mean, we weren't very intimate very often because of it. And now it's the opposite. Like I, I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm I'm like, honey, don't don't do that. Let me do it. <laughs> I'm doing laundry every day. I'm folding. Like it gives me the energy. A lot of people say, and I've, I've said this so many times too. I don't have the energy to work out. I've said like a couple minutes ago, you know, I didn't have the energy to work out. Yes, you do. Because the energy that you put towards working out, you're going to get back like tenfold. You're going to get so much more energy. And especially if you're drinking your water, like you should be. I love that. I also love, and this is why I like we connected like so fast that you listen to podcasts and books and audible, you know, while you work out, it's like you're working on your mind while you're working on your body. You just can't help but to feel amazing when you walk out of there. Yes. I love that. So now, okay. So just detailed questions. I just love getting very close and detailed. So what do you do when you go to the gym? Um, okay. So I personally love the arc trainer. It's a form of, um, kind of like an elliptical, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of meshed with, um, elliptical and a, like a stairmaster. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of like leg motion. I feel like I'm a lot of the time I'm working on my glutes while I'm on my, on the elliptical or on the arc trainer. And I don't get that from the, just the regular, elliptical I don't like treadmills I've tried that so many times my knees are just they they kill after I do that I get shin splints all the time when I when I do that so you, it's just like finding the um the machine that works best for you so that's my cardio I do about 30 minutes of um cardio and that's where I when I dig into my my um audio book or podcasts um, the most, like I'm able to like pop on my notes, like I said, and take some notes if something pops out to me. Um, and then after that, I spend about, um, I want to say 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how I'm feeling and like what time I have there. I go over to the, um, the machines and like the, the free weights and stuff. And I work on, um, one to two muscle groups a a day. Like today I worked on my biceps and triceps. So it was arm day. And I did like certain amount of um, arm workouts with that. And then yesterday I did legs. So I did some squats and I did, you know, so each day is a different muscle group. I love that. And how do you keep, how do you keep track of your, your workouts? And by the way, I just want to say you're getting amazing comments that other women are saying that they are in that same boat that 
they fall off once in a while and it's you just got to keep getting back and their love in what you're saying relating to what you're saying because I think a lot of women I mean based on the comments based on our conversations all the people we know that that is it is really hard to put ourselves first that mom guilt is real keeping the promises like what Rachel you know talks about um, it's just making that decision every day to do that work and you could go easily go home and clean the kitchen or yeah. you know, watch your Netflix or I don't know, you know, go back to your work or whatever the things that you're doing. But when you take that step back and you focus on yourself, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything, especially when you're working on your mind at the same time. My oh. biggest thing that I've done, like, I think it helped moving into this new house because we didn't have internet until yesterday. So um, I wasn't scrolling on Facebook. I haven't been watching Netflix. Like my, my daughter will watch a movie or two here and there. And my husband loves the TV. I hope that one day we can get, that, get him away from that. But um, that's the biggest thing because I was like, I want to say I'm a, I was addicted to it. I was addicted to scrolling. I'm like, I'm, I'm on Facebook because I have this business. I need to do it. And I wasn't doing anything business building. Mm -hmm. I was just lying to myself. Okay, so that's a good question. And I, I really didn't know where this conversation was going to go. But I do, that's a really good point. Because I feel like what I've been seeing lately on Instagram and on Facebook and different things. But when you're working out and you're feeling your best, do you feel like you don't you're not stuck in that comparison trap because you're so busy working on yourself that you're not even looking what anybody else is doing or or it's not affecting you as much or yeah. if you have an issue with that you know I mean just tell me your experience with that yes I would constantly compare myself because I was scrolling on Facebook that's what else are you going to do when you're scrolling of course you're going to compare yourself to other people mm -hmm. um I like to compete against myself honestly like, I like to go to the gym so I can be a better person than I was yesterday. And I like to read audio or I listen, listen to audio books, listen to podcasts because I want to be a better person. <laughs> I love it. What are you listening to right now? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so today I was doing um, Rachel Hollis's and her husband, their Rise Together podcast. So that's yep. what I was doing today. And then... Um, my husband's been going through this dry spell, um, just n not really like reading the word or, and so I've been, I was uh, listening to um, a YouTube. I can't remember what guy it was, but he was, it was basically praying for your husband. Mm -hmm. so that, was, that was another thing I was listening to. Um, yesterday I went to the coffee shop because I couldn't get focused here. I was just like, I have to clean. I have to clean. So I'm like, I, I want to do something. Um, I wanted to prepare for this, this video, to be honest. And um, I was listening to this guy and he was talking about, this is an, the next book that I want to read, um, The Power of Habit. And I've been wanting to read it for a long time by um, Charles du Duhigg. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how if you write, write down like Q and then you put a, like a little arrow. So the reason, so I put the temptation so say somebody put a chocolate bar in front of your face. Do you want this? So your action, decision, so you either say yes or no. And if you're on a healthy life, lifestyle, you're going to say no. You're going to try to say no. Um, and that reward is what comes out of it. So that's like uh, what you get from the decision. So if you end up eating that chocolate bar, it's going to taste delicious. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But your long-term goal in a year you're going to not like where you're at if you keep doing what you're doing because that's just going to end up in the same habit of just letting yourself yourself get the better of yourself, I guess you would say. You're the enemy, I guess. <laughs> I hear you. And I really like that. Arla is one of the girls listening, and she said she'll love the, you'll love the book. She said she, she loves it. <laughs> I've been wanting to. It's been on my list, but I don't know why I haven't taken that plunge. Um. What an, another thing here. What did I, what else did I do? Um, oh, Revelation Wellness. I really wanted to say something about that. Have you ever heard of that? What's it called? Revelation Wellness. I have not. It's if you guys listening, let me know if you guys have. Yeah, it's by Lisa Keaton. And um, she's a God-fearing woman. She, um, she does this 
amazing thing, which helped me a lot when I was stuck in, in my ways back in the other town that I was from before my um, routine really set, got set. Um, she basically talks in your ear and like plays music and she's working out with you. So she's like winded and, you know, and she basically just says like either verses or stuff to like uplift you. Wow. It's really awesome. You, you got to check it out. Is that a podcast or an audible? Um, it's podcast. Okay. Okay. I'll write that down. Revelation Wellness. And then another a podcast. Yeah. Another one that I, I talked to you about at um, convention. I really like God Centered Mom. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's actually where I stumbled upon Revelation Wellness. Uh, the, the girl, the lady, Heather, Heather McFania. I can't, I can't say her last name. But anyways, she, she recommends books. She recommends like stuff to better yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. And that would be a good, good one to listen to. I love that. Thank you. I wrote both of those down. Okay. So what else? Walk me through your whole routine from not, you don't have to go through your whole day, but like in the morning, getting yourself, getting yourself up and ready to get out the door is not easy, right? As, even if you're in a routine, it's not because you have to get your clothes ready or put them on the night before or whatever it is to, to guarantee that you're going to get out the door. So what are the things that have worked for you? Because it's, it's, you know, commitment and dedication to do that. Mm -hmm. So for the longest time, my husband would wake up and make me breakfast. That would be his first thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working though at the time. Now, now that I'm not working, I do that. Like I I make it very, uh, a point to wake up in the morning and make him breakfast. Now this is new within the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's been making me feel really good. And then not looking at my phone for the first hour. I mean, other than just looking at time or something, but yeah, not scrolling through Facebook, not looking through my emails. Don't do that. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be behind. <laughs> and what do you eat in the morning? Um, in the morning, I like to do steel cut oats. Mm-hmm. I like to cook those up. And then um, I learned this from a friend that I used to work with. Um, frozen berries, so like um, raspberries, blueberries, that's really good inside of that. So if you cook up the steel cut oats and then put some of that, and then if you like nuts, I like walnuts in there and a little bit of brown sugar. Mm-hmm. And lately I've been putting a drop of um, On Guard so that it Ooh, that's good. helps boost my immune system. So it's really yummy. And then if you want to substitute that, um, the fruit for... Um, I'm sorry, the, the frozen fruit, I usually, I sometimes put apples in there too. Yes. That with the unborn is really good. Mm-hmm. Love doing that. And we love doing the strawberries. And that's like their syrup. If they get any kind of waffles or any of that stuff. I, I don't make that stuff for my kids, but my mother-in-law does. And so we're like, no syrup over here. You Like she makes it with the frozen strawberries, melts it, and it's like the best syrup. And it's like guilt-free, you know. Um <laughs> Okay, I love that. So then what else? So then what do you do? So after that, I wake my daughter up after I spend some time with my husband, eat breakfast. My daughter eats at school, so I don't have to make her anything in the morning. Awesome. It is really cool. <laughs> so I wake her up, and then um, she slowly wakes up. I get her ready. She goes in the bathroom, you know, takes her vitamins and stuff, and um, I get her off to school. I love it. And then you just head right to the gym. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, something about the clothes, too. I didn't say anything about that. I do like to set that on, on top of my dresser. I put I put whatever clothes I'm going to wear the next morning on top of my dresser so I can do that. Yes. Put them on right away. Brush it, my teeth. Take my vitamins. It's weird, those little things that we have to do to to prepare us for success because I'm the same way. Like I just started working out like every morning and sometimes I do it. I try to do it before the kids go to school, but if not, I'll do it after. And if I know I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. How will I ever wake up? And my, my excuses want to start coming the night before, honestly. I'm like, Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm up too late. There's no way I'm going to wake up or this and that. And I'm just like, okay, I need to literally put my workout clothes on as I'm going to bed. So 
I'm like, okay, that will save me five minutes in the morning. I won't have to figure it out. I'm already dressed. There's no excuse. Like I'm trying to cut my excuses, you know, because mentally our bodies are sometimes saying like giving us excuses. Well, the bed is so cozy. It's cold out and this and that, you know, and you, you like, like, I hear you. like, I know, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you know, you gotta like constantly beat your own mind. You know, that's, I feel like it's a mind game, especially when you're first getting started. It's so easy to not do it. But what you said in the beginning, um, in the beginning, it is hard, and then and your body doesn't like it. And then once it's a routine, it gets so much easier. Then if you miss a day, it's not so much that you feel guilty, but you're just like, ah, oh, oh mm -hmm. so lazy today, <laughs> or whatever. So I feel. <laughs> So, okay, so what else is on your list? I want to keep hearing it. I want to keep so, it. You said, you said uh, the habit's not really easy to start. Mm -hmm. So I say commit yourself to at least six weeks. At yeah. six weeks, if you're, if you're doing it, if you're promising, promising yourself, say you can do three days a week. Yep. Say an hour or even 30 minutes. I think we did, what was it, seven-minute workout when we were in, because we <laughs> ran out of time. Like you can, you can, do it. <laughs> yes. you can do however, however much time that you can. I mean, if you, if you're super busy and you can't wake up at the butt crack of dawn to, to do something like just make sure you're doing it for 10 minutes then. Uh -huh. And we felt that from seven minutes, we did the seven minute workout and it was intense. Mm -hmm. you, stop. you don't even breathe. You just go. <laughs> I like to do, so what I, what I like to do is I um, do my workouts. I come home, shower, get ready for the day. And then I do all of my chores. Like I, I do them so quickly that like I have enough time to do whatever I want the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So from, from then to the time I pick my daughter up, I have a lot of either doTERRA work or um, like just connecting with other people and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday, like I said, I, I went to the coffee shop to learn <clears throat> to learn a little bit more about myself and everything right now I feel like is a a big part a big part of me is learning more about myself and how to better myself I love that um you know I'll just say a lot of us are in doTERRA who are listening to so I'll just say because you're in doTERRA and um I joke but it's not really a joke. So I'll send pictures, you know, like I post a lot of pictures of my workouts and so do you, and I'll have you share everybody, you know, or tell them your Instagram handle, but um, I'll send pictures to my husband of me working out and he'll be like, I'm, I'm slaying at work. And I'm like, well, I am too, because my job and our, like our job is like wellness advocates is to literally work on ourselves. I'm Which like, is amazing. It's freaking amazing. I'm like, I am working on myself, you know, and I'm working. Like, this is what we need to do. We are constantly trying to get better mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. We're, like, when we are literally living our best life, that's the best way to um, to share with others. You can't tell people what to do. You have to show them and inspire them, and that's what you're doing every single day. When you're working on yourself, you're literally um, – working on your business because you are your, you know, business, you're, you're motivating leaders are on here and you're motivating them, you know, and, and you just like what you said, constantly trying to do better than what you did yesterday. And then someone's going to be on here and say like, yeah, I'm going to do better than I did yesterday. When everyone is just doing a little bit better and a little bit more than what they did the day before, that is how we make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. That is it, you know, and everyone's feeling good and not being, caring to each other, but just inspiring each other. And everyone's best is going to look different depending on where everybody is in their um, season of life. You know, um, I love what you said about the six weeks too. So true. Um, so true. Okay. Keep going. I love what you're, I'm loving what you're saying. Sorry. I'm not reading. <laughs> okay. So okay. a big okay. question that I really love right now is I'm hearing a lot of, echoing do you hear that no but that happened to me one time so I know what it's like <laughs> kind of scary are you, are you keep hearing it um let me let me talk a little bit I'll see yeah. <laughs> so um have you ever heard of Jim Quick 
You're stumping with with all these people who I don't know. Okay. So I'm helping you. <laughs> I am I have a whole page of notes. Yes, you are. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, um, I just now found him on, on YouTube. <laughs> okay. I love YouTube. So, he he's like the type that he um he's a speed reader. He's um I I think he's a professor, I believe. But he's all about like just chiming into your your brain like getting the best activity out of your brain that you can get Mm -hmm. so um let me read a couple of things that I jotted down about his I was I was reading um or I was listening to one of his videos I can't remember what I'll I'll uh, put it in the um comments later I can't remember exactly where it was um but it says your brain is a deletion device so you it has it has to filter out things. People filter based around their beliefs, their identity, their self worth. And oh, I already put that identity, but I I thought that was so powerful. People filter. So if you're if you think that something's very important to you, you should remember those things. And if you don't, then you have to check yourself. You have to check yourself and change like what you what you actually think is important to yourself so I thought I thought that was wild because it shot me in the heart basically (laughs) yeah so what was the quote your brain is a filter so your your brain is a deletion device oh okay okay so it's constantly filtering things out because your brain can only take so much yep I love that and you learn best by pulling things in, not pushing them in. So like hearing these podcasts, like I'm talking about, I like grab the things that are really interesting to me that really grab, like jump out to me, basically. I don't push things in. I let them jump out to me. <laughs> it will, I love that when you're constantly filling your head with something good, things will, um, you'll hear what you need to hear for that day. Mm-hmm. And even if you listen to that same podcast or that same book a couple of years later, you're going to hear it in a totally different way because you're hearing what you need to hear at that day. Yeah. I've listened to Start Your Why probably three times and I get something different every time. Yeah. Because you're a new person. Every yeah. You're a new person, you know, every time. Yep. I love it. That's what I love about this journey too. I mean, the personal growth, people don't talk about it enough, but it's when well, you just work on yourself. That's huge. It sounds so easy when, like, if you guys are listening, like, leave a comment how you're feeling too. But when you work on yourself, that is all you need to do because you'll know what to do. You'll attract the right things into your life. You'll hear what you need to hear. You will be on your A game. You won't let negative things affect you. You'll just be that light to others. It just, I just wish everyone knew it and <laughs> continue to work on themselves, you know? Yeah. So another thing, um, it says your limitations, if you fight for them, then you get to keep them. Mm. That's good. good. And then um, I started this one because before I, I briefly talked about that, I didn't do a, like a whole lot of cooking and cleaning. So um, this one says clean environment, external reflects the internal. So I I found if I have like a clean area, then I definitely get some stuff done or I work on myself a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically, the reason why I started this journey, though, is I want to give and I didn't have enough to give, like without pulling just my, you know, this this is terrible, but being comfortable, you know. I tried to give as much as I could, but I want to give more. So um, he was talking about, um, okay, so let me see here. A life well lived equals full love, laughter, and learning. Growth plus giving, and he calls them grow givers. Isn't that cute? I love that. And then- I, I think you just said, actually, one of the most important things. Um that you wanted to give more, but you didn't have enough to give. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's huge. That's yeah. a quote from 
from Brittany. <laughs> you can sit right there. <laughs> okay, what else? Oh, he was talking oh, about um, the mindless scrolling on Facebook. He called it digital de dementia. Hmm. And it's so, it's so true because it adds overwhelming anxiety to your life. Um, you got to take the time for the white space to be creative. Take a walk. Um, oh, oh, that's where it, we're into it. Oh, life well lived. Giving. Grow givers. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing around on here. So, so two things I'm going to say about that. So one, the most, my, you know, Erin Branscombe, you met her. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. She was reading a book, and I don't even know the book's name, but she said the most creative people in the world, uh, based on this one study, you know, that they did, that they take a walk every single day. They get out and see the nature, see the fresh air, and they're like the most creative people. Um, so I love that. Gives you time to anxiety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting what you said too about the digital dementia. Um, if uh, social media is hard for you guys, just unfollow people or get off, or set a timer, set the timer for like two minutes, get your fill in if you want, and then get out because um, if it's not helping you, it's there's no point of doing it. Yes. The, the revelation or the not revelation wellness, the um, rise together podcast today mm -hmm. had a lot to do. I didn't get any time to write it yet, but it was amazing. If you guys got the chance, go check out the rise together podcast today. That was really cool. He said, I think it was uh, whatever you fill in, like what basically what you just said, whatever you fill in your mind, and you're, that's gonna be the person that you're, you're, you're gonna take on anxiety. You're gonna take on. I think we lost you for a second, Brittany. Can you hear us, or can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, we lost your last your last quote. Oh, okay. Well, is it my end? It muted for a second. Gotcha. <clears throat> it was basically just tagging on to what you said. He was he was talking about whatever you like intake, you're definitely gonna output. So if you're, if you're just mindlessly scrolling, you're gonna you're gonna cause anxiety, you're gonna cause bad stuff on your life. Yeah. You're just gonna basically size up your all of those folks. folks. Yep, so true. I keep losing you again. I think that we're getting an internet um, issue going on. So let's, let me ask you this. How can people find you, even though we were just talking about Instagram? You are very inspirational on Instagram, and you do post your, and document your life. And so where can they find you to continue following you? Um, my Instagram handle is rippedmommy. Yep. This girl is ripped, so <laughs> good motivation right there. <laughs> I wasn't always, though. <laughs> Actually, when I started, when I started that Instagram, I was trying to um, just start motivating other people, mm -hmm. and that wasn't when I was staying at home. When I when I was going through that, all that, trying to figure out my myself, so I was wow. help myself out. And, and others. Right. I love that. Post post on your Instagram a before and after of of your of your journey and not just the physical but the mental. I think that's what people are wanting and craving these days is how working out and being physical can change the mental and the emotions and everything else. But we keep getting like disconnected a little bit even the comments are saying we're getting disconnected oh. so let's wrap this up and then um i'm gonna ha i'm gonna keep this here on facebook i'm also gonna put it on youtube on bonnie donahue and we're putting these on podcasts and so we're gonna get those up in the next week or so we're doing the header and or the you know the intro and whatnot getting that stuff ready so that is it 
Brittany, thank you, thank you, thank you. So Ripped Mommy on Instagram, what about, are you on Facebook? Can they follow you there? Yes, um, Essentially Oiled by Brittany is my group and page. Awesome, because she also rocks out the oils. Oh, we barely talked about oils. For the oil lovers, what's your top two oils? <laughs> Before we go. <laughs> for, for motivation? Sure, yeah. Motivate every day. All the day. <laughs> All of the day. And then love it. probably Kopai Butter. For healing your <laughs> Yes, and that's a new one that just came out. <clears throat> yeah, for um, just like when your muscles are fatigued and um, you just need some help with that. This helps. I love this. I love it. Well, thank you, Brittany. Thanks for getting on and sharing. I know it's not always easy, but you did an awesome job and you had a lot of people relating to you. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.